these scenes are from today's documentary film made during the Salem, Oregon Crusade for Christ. Salem, Oregon, in the heart of the Willamette Valley, is the site of today's Oral Roberts Crusade. At the invitation of sponsoring pastors and religious groups, Oral Roberts has brought his giant tent cathedral to the Salem area. The documentary film you are invited to see was not rehearsed in any way. The title of today's sermon is, Everything God Has is Yours. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and now it's my happy privilege and pleasure to present the man that God has raised up with a message for your deliverance, the Reverend Oral Roberts. I wish to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, beginning at verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. I wish to talk to you tonight on this subject, everything God has is yours. Many of us love the story of the prodigal son. It is perhaps the best story that Jesus ever told, and he told it with such loving regard for this boy. But actually, he told the story of two prodigal sons, two brothers, not just one. He told the story of the younger brother who became a prodigal by virtue of the fact he went away from home and wasted his father's inheritance. He also told the story of the elder brother who was just as much a prodigal as the other was. The elder brother did not run away from home. He did not take his father's goods and squander and waste them and riotous living. But he was just as much a a prodigal as the younger boy was, although in an entirely different manner. He represents the people who ignore God, who don't take into account the existence of the Lord. To them, a God is just a figure of speech. He isn't a good and loving Heavenly Father. He isn't one we can walk and talk with every day. He isn't one we can know for ourselves. He is just a mere figure of speech. Yes, this boy was a prodigal son through his own self-righteousness. He never ran away. He never went to the far country. But where he was was a far country, for he was just as far away from God as the prodigal son was. This, um, 
This elder brother uh, stirred and caused quite a commotion when his younger brother, the prodigal son, came home. You remember how the prodigal son asked for the goods that fell to him and took them, ran into a far country, squandered them with riotous living, and then came to himself in the pig pen and said, I'll, I'll return home and ask uh, forgiveness because I've sinned before heaven and against my father. He returned. His father had compassion, received him, made a great feast, and there was music and dancing while heaven was bending low and the angels were present. The elder brother was down in the fields working when the prodigal son returned home and uh, was given this feast. He heard the sound of music and dancing. He came up to his father's house, called the servant and said, what is this commotion? What does this mean? And he said, your long lost prodigal brother is found. He was lost and he's now re uh, returned home. Your father has received him, forgiven him and made this feast for him. The elder brother's lips fell. He was very unhappy about it. So he refused to go in. The servant told the father, the father came out and said, Son, why aren't you glad? Come in with us. Help us celebrate the restoration of your long lost brother. The elder brother looked at his father and said, I won't come in. He said, that, that, that son of yours, he took what you gave him and he spent it with harlots. Now you've taken him back. You've forgiven him. He said, listen, father. I've been here all these years. I've never transgressed your law. I've lived correctly. I've never asked for a thing. You never gave me anything to provide a, a feast for my friends. You've given me nothing, and I've had nothing all these years. And the father looked at him and smiled and said, Son, all I have is yours. Everything I have belongs to you. All you have to do is ask for it, believe for it. Come on in, son. Help us rejoice. Everything I have belongs to you. And the elder brother would not receive it. What was wrong with this elder brother? First, he did not know the kind of father he had. He did not realize that his father was so good. Second, his father was a man of compassion. The Bible says that he saw the younger brother, the prodigal son returning, ran, fell on his neck, kissed him, and had compassion. Third, God is a God of forgiveness. He forgave this prodigal son. He was so glad to get his soul back, his life back, that he forgot about the squandering, wasting of material things. Ladies and gentlemen, some of us put more value upon things than we do our lives. We think it's more important that we recover a lost automobile or a lost piece of property than it is to find a lost soul again. And forth his father had plenty to spare. The young prodigal who was away from home in the pig pen said, why, even the servants of my father have plenty, plenty to spare. And God has everything we need and then some. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Do you know the Bible says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches by Christ Jesus in glory? You think of your needs tonight. Maybe you need a house. You need an automobile. You need so much money to pay your bills and to get along in the world. You need a new suit of clothes. You need this and you need that. The Bible says that God will supply that need according, according to the riches, his riches by Christ. Jesus in glory. The fifth thing that the elder brother did not know about his father was that his father valued the soul of this prodigal brother of his above the material things he had wasted. This is one of the wonderful things about God. God says, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world, then lose his own soul? God says, your soul's salvation is worth more than all the world put together. How many of us put things in front of our souls? When you and I stand at the judgment, God perhaps will say to you and me, he will say, my son died in your place. I provided salvation for your soul, healing for your body, provision for your life, deliverance from fear, from torment, from sin, from sickness. I gave those provisions through the death of my son Christ on the cross. 
why didn't you expect them? Why didn't you accept them? Why didn't you receive them? Now, God wants us to expect. In a few minutes, I will be asking people to give their hearts to Jesus Christ. Some people will rise from their chairs and come down here as quickly as they can, some even with tears. They'll come down here expecting to change their way of living and to have God in their lives. Others will just sit and uh, sort of uh, in a daze like. They just don't seem to realize they need God. Now, when we come, we must expect the Lord to take a hand in our lives, to change things. You must expect a miracle if you want it to happen. Will you say it, please? You must expect a miracle if you want it to happen. Say it again. This is God's message to us tonight. Let every head be bowed. Now, while every head is bowed, listen carefully to me, please. And I want you to give me a chance to say a prayer for your soul that Christ will forgive your sins and come into your heart. And now, with every head bowed, take the first step, please. I want every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl who believes in my prayers, and you want my prayers, that Jesus will come into your heart. If you want me to pray that Jesus will forgive your sins, give you peace in your heart, and save your soul tonight, take the first step, please, in his name right now, and raise up your right hand quickly. Up high, up high with your hands, please, so I can see you. Hundreds of hands. Hold them there. Will you take the second step? I want every man, woman, boy, and girl who raised your hand for my prayer for your soul to be saved. Take the second step, please, in his name right now, and stand on your feet for my prayer. Please stand right now. And they're getting up all over this audience. Oh, keep getting up. Keep getting up. Remain standing. Every head bowed except the people standing and you look on me. I'm glad you're standing. This is God's night to save you. We have a place in front of me here at the platform where you may come forward and stand for my prayer. Do not sit back down, but walk down the aisles right now so I can pray for you. Come on. Come on. And they're coming, coming down every aisle. I'm about ready to pray with you now, and when I pray with you, I want you to pray from your heart and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Would you raise your right hand? Now, you who are watching us through television, I want to urge you to give your heart to Christ. Let Jesus come into your soul while these friends pray the prayer with me. As you watch us, put up your hand and don't be ashamed. Lift it up and pray this prayer, these words, and give your heart to Christ. Each of you now with your right hand up, turn your face up and close your eyes and repeat after me this prayer. And you who are watching, say the same prayer with faith. O oh Lord, be merciful, Be merciful to me, to me. A, sinner. a sinner. Save my soul. Save my soul. Come, into my Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Forgive, my sins, Forgive my sins, O Lord, for I repent. For I repent. And now I, and now I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is, the is the Son of God. I receive Christ. As my personal Savior, by God's grace, I will live a Christian life and do His will forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you met that, say amen. Do you feel better in your heart? Oh, that's good. Brother Deweese, I want to talk with this very lovely young lady here. Who are you? Carol Stevens. And from? Estacada. How old are you? Fifteen. Do you feel that Christ actually is now in your heart? Yes, I do. How does it make you feel? Real good. Now, you're going to go to church and do his will and grow up to be his child, right? Yes. Thank you very much, and God go with you is my prayer. 
I shall be back in a few moments to pray for the sick. I want all you good friends to go out to our prayer tent for further instruction and further prayer that we may help you further to accept Christ and we wish to give you some free Christian literature. And you who are watching us through television may have our free Christian literature on how to know you're saved by simply writing me and asking for it. Oral Roberts, Tulsa 2, Oklahoma. Thank you. We've been trying now, week after week, through these television programs to inspire your faith to be an instrument in the hands of God to help you let your faith go to God so you can release your faith and believe the Lord strongly, positively, so that he can heal your body, so he can help your soul, so he can help your loved ones and your friends. May this be the hour. This is the hour. This is God's hour to heal you. Open your heart. Yes, we believe in good doctors. We believe that God heals in many ways. But we know he hears and answers prayer today, and he can heal you right this hour. So open your heart, look to him as I pray for these people, believe, and I'm sure God will heal your body. He will make you a new creature through his holy power. My friends, First Christian Church of Salem, right here in town. You are Mrs. Uh, Little, Mr. and Mrs. Little. Yes. Mr. Little, is he has arthritis. He's hard of hearing. It's hard to do his work because of the arthritis. Mrs. Little has a goiter, which you can see on her neck. Turn around so people can see that goiter on your neck. How many of you believe God can take the goiter from her neck? May I see your hand? Thank you. Turn around so I can touch you. Mrs. Little, how does the goiter affect you? Does it choke you? Or? It chokes me and gets me very, very nervous, and I can't sleep at night. And lately... It's getting so that I can hardly talk at times. Well, I see your voice is bad now. Mrs. Little, do you really believe God can do this? I surely do. When can he do it? He can do it right now. Touch your neck with your hands. Jesus, we ask that this swollen neck be healed. My sister, he's doing it now. Jesus, just put your hand up there, please. What? It's gone. Yes, I know. Glory to God. Turn around. That's how people see it. <laughs> Who healed you? Nobody but God. That's right. And tell me your church again. First Christian Church. You know, I went to the university that the First Christian Church has in Oklahoma, Phillips University. I went to that school. God bless you. I don't want to only be healed, but I want to serve God. You want to serve God. You go and wait for your husband. Jesus, bless his hearing and make it normal. Bless the arthritis to heal it. Sir, do you have faith? I have faith. Raise your arms in his name, not your legs. Amen. Bend over and touch the floor in his name. Now, are you going back to work? I am. You feel you can now? Mm -hmm. Turn around for me so you can't see my lips. Do you hear me all right? Yes, Say, I hear you. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Take that home with you, sir. Give God thanks for it, will you? Praise God. Well, my patient brother, you've been waiting, haven't you? Salem, Oregon, your name and address, street address. Max Myers, 1195 Shamal Road. What is this disease? Well, uh, I had a prostate condition about three years ago, and uh, they finally healed it up the use of antibiotics, and it's left me all stiff and arth in my back and legs, and I have a great deal of pain. With is it also rheumatoid arthritis yes. in the back and legs? Yes. And you're all stiff. Mr. Myers, are you saved? I was saved this evening, sir. Tonight? That's right. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Mr. Myers, if you don't receive a healing in your body, the other is the greatest thing in the world. Right? Yes, sir. Your soul salvation. You bet, sir. I hope you'll join a good church. Going to. You're going to do it. That's right. We're, we're, we're proud of you for that. 
your hand on your back, sir. Jesus, let his back be healed. Let his body be healed of stiffness, rheumatoid arthritis. Mr. Myers, I don't have any doubts. Would you bend over and touch that floor? Huh? You're healed, huh? That's it. I thought so. You've been waiting for this. Yes, I was uh, all set to come and find you when I found out you were coming here. I haven't been able to do anything for about three years. Mount anything. For well, 36 months, you haven't been able to hold uh, down your work. Now do you think you can go back to work? Well, certainly. Your soul is saved. Your body is healed. You're ready to go out and meet the world and serve God, right? Yes. God go with Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Right. God bless you. My sister, what's your name and address, please? Mrs. William Swift, 178 Davis Road, Oregon City, Oregon. Your two children have muscular dystrophy. That's right. Which one is uh, Billy? The oldest. Are you Billy's son? The doctor says you have muscular dystrophy and it'll be fatal before maturity. Is that true? That's right. And the little boy? He has the same, but it isn't as bad a form as the older one. Mrs. Swift, are you a member of a church? Yes, I am. Which? The Church of God. Fine. We're glad to have you tonight, glad to have these children. Uh, how long have they had muscular dystrophy? Uh, about four years. Both of them? Yes. Was it the same time? No, Billy had it uh, about four years ago, and Larry, we've noticed in the last year. What do these boys think about coming up here for prayer? Well, they come to be healed tonight. Have they told you that? Oh, yes. Billy, is that correct? What, yes. What did you say? What did you tell your mother about coming up here to get healed? Anything? I forgot. Ah, no. honey, you're so sweet. Thank you. Brother Deweese, I want Larry to stand here in front of me. It is true that he falls a lot, Mrs. Swift. Billy. Uh, well, I want the older son first then. Billy is the one that falls and is worse at this point. Uh, right here, son. Uh, Mrs. Swift, where do you think it works mostly? Is it hips, legs, or is it all over his body? One hip is higher than the other, and one leg is uh, more lame than the other, yes. I and see. He did walk on his toes, but the Lord has healed him from that, and he's down on his heels as far as that is concerned. So we know he's Okay, better. Billy, when I lay my hand on you, hon, believe Jesus to heal you. And audience, help me now. Lay your hands on the back of the chair. As I asked you a while ago, open your hearts. Help me pray for us little crippled children. <clears throat> Jesus of Nazareth, son of the living God, heal, heal, heal Billy Swift. Heal. Billy, hmm? you know, I prayed for you then. I asked Jesus to heal your body. All right. I was well. Billy, how do you feel now? Fine. Right this moment, I want to offer prayer for you. Just touch your chest with your hands. 
Look up to God as I ask his healing upon your body. Everyone here in the audience remain real reverent. Now, as you touch your chest with your hands, I'm going to reach forth my hands here. And surely there is no distance in prayer. The Lord is there. The Lord is here. If he's healed these people, he can heal you. And when we receive mail every week from people who receive healing through these prayers, if you're ready, I'm ready. And now, my brother, through Jesus of Nazareth, receive your healing. Be healed by God's power. My sister, in Jesus' name, receive your healing. Be healed and set free. Oh, praise God. If you have a little child, put your hand on it. Jesus, heal the child. Heal it for thy glory and make it whole. We pray in the name of the holy child, Jesus. Amen and amen. Jesus, we pray for this child. We pray that God shall heal it and the Lord shall make its little body strong and well. Amen. God bless you, sister. We're watching you as you go. God go with you tonight.